that living sacrifice that called us to be. Father, righteous and holy because of who we are in you, in Christ Jesus. Yes. Heavenly Father, I give you the, the glory and honor in all things, and I ask you to let our voices be that symphony to your ears. Let it be that sweet, sweet sound in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 
Holy Spirit. I'm asking you to move in this room right now. Bring your presence, Holy Spirit, like a flood. Flood this place, Father, with your spirit, with your presence. Hallelujah. Because we need a
people. Amen. 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 Amen.
And where the Spirit of the Lord is, oh, come on here, there is freedom. freedom. Hallelujah. So now I have freedom in a rich and satisfying life. Woo, come on. Somebody's got to shout on this one. That makes me happy. That makes me happy. You know, when you go off and you be a little stubborn, a little, a little bad, and you quit your job, you better know you got somebody to rely on. And you better not be man, because man ain't going to do it for you. You know, but God will. Yes. God will. You know, and I'm, I'm going to just tell y'all this little story real quick. I did quit my job. Amen. I had, there was things going on, and I quit. I just said, I, enough is enough. But the Lord said, he understood. He saw everything going on, what was happening to me in that job. But when I quit, he said, okay, I'm going to supply in a different way. So in the same week, was it not, babe? The same week that I quit my job, he changed his job. What? He literally gave him a different shift from, was it five to one in the afternoon? But he also now works till five or six sometimes in the afternoon and sometimes from five to 10.30 at night. He changed his job and he gave him more hours. And when he changed, but, but the thing is, when he changed his job, it also changed the hourly pay. It increased, it didn't decrease, it increased. So that's God. Okay, that's God moving to show us that I will give you a rich and satisfying life even whenever things don't look like it. Because at first I was thinking, Lord, what have I done? <laughs> what have I done? But I didn't do anything that he didn't direct. You know why I know that? Because I ask him every day. Father, I need you to direct my path. I need you to be in control of my life so the words that come out of my mouth be in control. The, the decisions I make, give me the thought, be in control, Lord, right? So if I'm really depending on him to be in control, guess what? Everything's going to be okay. He's going to make a way. He will make a way. Now, what if something else changes? Do I go back to work? We don't know. I don't know God's plan, but he does. I do know this. I'll be working here at the church for a while. So while I'm here working, like I said, the doors will be open. Y'all can come anytime. Come in. You're welcome. Come pray. Come sit and talk with me. God is good. Amen. So where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And when we have the Holy Spirit within us, it is, the, it is taking out the world. Okay? And it's trash and all its junk. And it gives us the ability to see God for who He is and manifest His glory in our lives. Just like I just did. We give Him the glory. We can manifest the glory when we look for the good that God is doing in every situation. Hallelujah. So we'll manifest His glory in our lives and we progressively become more like Christ. Every single day that we're in His Word. Every single day we seek Him and we let Him be in control. How do we become more like Christ? Well, let me give y'all this. Celebrate recovery. All right? Celebrate recovery we have here. Tuesday nights, come. Come be with us. Let me tell you something. We've been in it. I love it. I enjoy it because it's always encouraging. Celebrate recovery encourages me to keep going when life struggles is coming my way. But in Principle 7, in Celebrate Recovery, here's what he tells us to do. Reserve a daily time with God for self-examination. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now i got to look at myself. Lord Jesus, <laughs> help me today. What did I do that didn't uplift you? Uh -huh. Come on. And then that gives me a chance to repent to him. And let's just take it a little step further. What if I've done something to hurt somebody I love? Maybe I hurt their feelings. Maybe I said something that, you know, just wasn't the right thing to say. But what does that give me the, the ability to do? It gives the Holy Spirit the ability to talk to me, right? And then it gives me the ability to go to that person and say, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Yes. 
I was wrong. See, that's my self-examination, right? And it gives me a chance to tell Jesus I love him. Bible reading, well, come on, that's a must every day. We must have the word going in, because if you don't have the word going in, how in the world do we know what Jesus is telling us? Right? right? Yes, he, has a, he will speak in my spirit, but the most way, the, the, the biggest way God speaks to us is right here in this, yes. in the word. Hallelujah. That's where he tells me what I've done wrong. Because if I read the word and he's going to definitely tell me in here, you shouldn't have done that. Forgive me. Right? Hallelujah. And prayer. We are to be in prayer 24-7. All the time, never ceasing. But he says, here it is. Reserve a daily time with God for self-examination, Bible reading, and prayer in order to know God and his will for our life and to gain the, oh, oh come on, power to yes. do his will. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Amen. I have power, yes. power, wonder working yes. power in the blood. Woo, hallelujah. I get excited, y'all. Yes. <laughs> I just get excited. I can't yes. help it. It, uh, <laughs> you know, it makes you want <laughs> Praise God. But anyway, she that's that's it. That's where we're going to stop. It gives me power to know his will for my life that I can do what he wants me to do. Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Pastor Jeff, I'm going to quit taking your time. I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you for allowing me to share. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Now, I was an encouraging word, wasn't it? Yes. 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 All right. Before we get into the word, I just want to uh, give a, a couple of announcements here. Uh, can you focus on this one if you would? For those that are watching on, on Facebook, that are, that are watching on uh, YouTube, uh, if you would also like to sow into this ministry, sow seed in this ministry, there are several ways you can do it. You can go onto our website, which is www.vancleavewc.org. Uh, there's a donate button up there that you can uh, donate. Or if you, uh, you know, like some of us older people like to just send a check or something like that, a money order, I don't encourage any cash in the mail. But the, the uh, uh, business address for the church, you just make the check out to VWC. You can mail it to VWC, and the address is 9107 Nanny's Road, Van Cleave, Mississippi. 39565. So that's some ways that you can sow into this ministry if you would like to. Uh, some another couple things I want to talk about is, is we have we've been praying for some healing for some people in our church and and I, I think that's been it's, uh, we've been seeing some results of it you know uh, Raymond Renette I mean I know we've been praying for you guys and, and we are so glad to see y'all back in the house you know what I mean I mean that is you know when you have family that is missing right. You feel it, yes. right? And, and let me tell you something. Each and every one of you that are here today, even the ones that are not here today, that that don't want to do come, I feel it when y'all when y'all are gone. Okay, my family. I miss my family. Oh, that's right. You know, and I love coming back into with all of my family. And you know, and one of the great things is when I got my, I got my brother here today that, that, that's from Florida. Uh, he's, uh, he he. Uh, I've known, I've known Mark for, uh, we, we figured it up, it's about almost 40 years now that, that uh, he's had to put up with me and, and uh, my shenanigans. And uh, trust me, he gives it back just as well. But uh, one of the things about Mark is also is, is whenever uh, God uh, called me to uh, start the church, and I was praying about board members, somebody that, that, would, that would come on board and have, a, have the vision that God gave me and able to catch that vision and not only catch that vision but as able to own the vision right and I uh, called uh, Mike and Susan they were living in Texas at the time and uh, they I called them and I said hey I says I this is what I, this is what God called me to do and, I, and I'd like for you to come on board with this Pastor Richard come here sir Mike Susan come here 
These, these have been my board members from the beginning, all right? And then uh, I said, you know, I needed to expand the board a little bit. And I called my brother, Mark, and I said, Mark, I said, this is what I would like to do. And he said, I'm 100% behind you. Mark, come here. Come on, brother. <laughs> so see, this, this is my brothers and my sisters that, that says, I understand the vision. Not only do not only do I understand it, but I'm going to own it. Yes. That's going to be my vision as well as your vision. Right. Yeah. While God spoke into my heart, He says, they said, okay, we hear it. We hear what God's saying. So this is my board. Now this is not only my board for for our, our business side of the house, but you're also looking at this is these people right here are also our deacons and deaconesses in this church. Right. They're, they, they are my right hand people. Yeah. The people that I come to whenever uh, I need advice. People that I come to whenever I need help in getting things done. This is who I, I can come to. Also, I want you all to see them because this is the people that y'all can come to also. Right? These, are, these are deacons and deaconesses in this house. And they have the authority of the pastor to make decisions, okay? To because they know I know that I can trust them, and if they have any questions about a decision that needs to be made, they I know they're going to come to me because they're going to make sure they have my heart as well too right. in this church. So I just want to just stretch your hands forward right now. I just want I just want to pray over them, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you. For these men and women that stood up, Lord, that said, yes, I'll go the journey with you. I'll be beside you I'll through the hardships, through the trials, but most importantly, that we get to see the good times. And we get to see the joys that come with serving you, Lord. So, Father, I'm asking you to, to strengthen them, Lord God. Lord, to give them peace of heart, peace of mind, that keep them focused on you, Lord God, and your will for this church, Lord God. Speak to their hearts, speak to their minds, Lord God, as only you can, Lord. And Father, we just pray a special blessing upon them in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, pastors. Thank you. Y'all Thank you. We love you guys. So we love y'all too. We love everybody in this church. All right, Cameron, can you put my, my slideshow up now? So, who remembers what we talked about last week? Speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. Was, and now, don't have to raise your hand, but I want you to think about this a minute. All right? How many, people, how many of you have been exercising the authority that God gave you in speaking in tongues to tread over the serpents of this yes. world? This put to put a knot on Satan's head. And why? Because what happens when you speak in tongues? When you pray in the tongues, you're praying to who? God. To God. Okay. Does the devil understand it? Oh, no. Oh, man. And that puts a knot on his head because he hates it. And he's going to discourage you from the, from the gift that you have. He's going to tell you that's nonsense. That's gibberish. Yes. You know why I know that? Tried it on me too. Uh -huh. But I know what the word of God says. Right? Like I said, I'm not I don't go on what man says. I don't go on what man feels, what man thinks. You want to know what this church stands on? You want to know the doctrine of this church? Right here. Yes. Yeah. Right here. And today we're going to talk about some more doctrine. That's found right here. That's going to give you the power. All right? You know? What, what, what was that old song? We got the power. Yeah. All right? Okay. But it's going to give you the power over the devil. So if everybody would stand with me for just a moment for the reading of God's word. Let's look at Luke 10, verse, verse 19. Luke 10, verse 19. And it says, Behold. Why does he say behold? 
He says, I want you to notice this. I want you to stand up and take a look at this. This is something that is very important for you to understand. He says, behold, I, this is Jesus talking. He says, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all. Is that, how much does that mean? Oh, oh that, means, that means you got a little authority. All right. Okay. You got some authority. You have what authority? All authority over the power of who? The enemy. Who is your enemy in the spirit? So who do you have authority over? Hallelujah. And we're going to get into that today. He says, and nothing by any means harm or hurt you. That means Satan cannot hurt you because you have the authority over him. Oh, Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you, Lord yeah, thank you, Jesus, Lord. that you have given us all of your authority, God, yes, yes. over the enemy. That we could, Lord, we can step on the serpents and the scorpions, Lord God, just like you do. That we have the power over the enemy, that he does not have the power or the authority over us, Lord God. Lord, today as we get into your word, as we begin learning what our authority is, Lord God, I just ask you right now to help us to understand how we can exercise your authority, Lord God, in this world today, in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. One of the most outstanding teachings in the Bible is about the Christian's authority. The authority that we have in the spiritual realm. We need to understand this. We have authority in the spiritual realm, which ultimately affects everything that we see in everyday life. People don't seem to understand that the spiritual realm affects our everyday life. When the, when the enemy is attacking us, when the enemy is coming after us with everything that he has, don't you think for one second it's not going to affect you personally? It's not going to affect your household. It's not going to affect your health. It's not going to affect your relationships with other people. It's going to affect everything there is in everyday life. And that's what he wants to do. Pastor Rachel just said that, what is the, that Jesus said that the uh, purpose of the thief is to do what? To steal, kill, and to destroy. But why did she, she show this also? Why did Jesus say he came to do? To bring his life to its fullness. Uh, as fullness, right? Yeah. Now, when you when you fill the gas tank up to the full line, all right? Can you put any more in it? Yeah. Yeah. Right, because it starts running over, yeah. right? So he gave it to his fullness. Psalms twenty three says that 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 you have not that you fill my cup to overflowing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, not just the full line. But to the overflowing, all right? So when we come into his full life and his overflowing life, then that also affects everything that we do and everything that happens in our natural lives as well, too. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So it, our spiritual realm affects our everyday life. See, and for so many years, this concept has been ignored by the church at large. We tend to, to ignore it. We tend to not talk about it. This is not things that we that we discuss in churches anymore. This is not things that we, we tell people about. Why? Because, you know, we, we have pastors that say we want them to come to us with their problems so that we can take authority over it. No, I, you don't have to come to me. You have the authority as a believer. Right. We have we have the people that well we just don't discuss that because that, that just that just doesn't seem like that's what's for today. And why do we have people in such turmoil in today's times? Because we don't exercise our authority like we should. And we even have te church that teach against the spiritual realm. We teach and teach against the authority that we have. Alright? The spiritual realm and the physical realm is different. Yes. 
but they're not different. They're one and the same. We are a triune being, just like God. God says in Genesis, He says, let us make man in whose image? His image. His image. We know that God is a triune being because He is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? Yes. So if God's got a Holy Spirit, and God's spiritual, when He made us, He made us what? Spiritual beings. Yes. If we didn't have a spirit, Paul says, if we didn't have a spirit, then our faith is useless. Okay? Because when we're dead, we're dead. But we, the Bible says that to be absent from the what? Body. body is to be what? Present with the Well, that if we're absent from the body and we don't have a spirit, then what's going to be present with the Lord? So we have a spirit. You know, for what they mean, they've been taught that we can only affect the spiritual realm by prayer. We pray and hope that our prayers are answered in our favor. I have more than a hope. Right? I have more than a hope. See, but only recently has we has the church once again begin teaching about the spiritual. Only recently has the, has the church begin talking about how we can affect the spiritual with the natural. That we, as children of God, have authority over the spiritual. And this is called the charismatic movement. Some people say it's the Pentecostal movement. Right? Why do they call it the Pentecostal movement? It's because what happened on the day of Pentecost, people were endued and empowered with the Holy Spirit. So therefore, that's what we refer to as Pentecostal. So do some people say, well, is your church a Pentecostal church? Yes. We're a Pentecostal church. And the, and the meaning of we are a spiritual church. I don't fall under the Pentecostal denomination, okay, or religion, or whatever you want to call it, okay, because I don't go by what man says. We go by what the word of God says. Oh, that's right. Amen. Amen. So, I guess you can call us more of a charismatic church than a Pentecostal church. But see, something that we need to understand is that in order to walk in the authority that we are given, right, we have to understand what that authority really is and that the authority has been delegated to you as a believer. So what is authority? Authority is defined as permission, authorization, license, or sanctioned power. It is also delegated power that belongs to someone else that is given to you. Now see, I can understand this because when I was in the Navy and I became a third class petty officer, we were considered a... Uh, a non-commissioned officer. But see, we had authority that was delegated to us. We had, the, the higher you went, the more authority was delegated to you. But we had the authority to start telling other people what they needed to do. You know? I remember one time we was on the ship and this we were holding uh, sweepers, which means cleaning up. All right? And uh, our division was assigned to clean up the passageway around our berthing. And I told this one guy, I said, hey, when they hold sweepers, you need to go and clean up this passageway. This, you know, it's our turn to do the passageway. He said, okay. So I went on my watch, and I'm standing at, the wa at my watch on the, the DC Central Desk Watch, and the, uh, they had to hold sweepers, and then the, all of the department head, duty department heads get together, and one of the chiefs come in after that, and he said, hey, he says, why wasn't the passageway cleaned up? I said, uh, well, it should have been. He said, okay, you're in charge of your division. Your division had the passageway. You need to make this happen right now. I said, yes, Chief, I'll go take care of this right now. So I went there to the, the birthing, and I told that guy he was in his right. And I said, hey, I said, why didn't you sweep the passageway? He said, well, I'm, I'm going to do it in just a little bit. I said, they already had sweepers, and we failed. 
They're coming back to do it again, so you need to get out there right now and go get it done. He looked at me and says, oh, is this an order? I said, as a matter of fact, yes it is. I'm giving you a lawful order right now. Get out of your act and get out there and sweep that passageway right now. Okay. So could I have done that unless authority was delegated to me? No, I could not have. But because certain authority was delegated to me, I had the authority to act upon that. And that's what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at the authority that has been delegated to you as a believer and the authority that you have to act upon that delegated authority. So the first thing I want to look at today is God's authority resides in you as a believer. All right? So who does God's authority reside in? Amen. Amen. So to understand this a little bit better, I would like to look at the authority of the believer by comparing it to the authority of our earthly law enforcement system, our police officers. We understand police officers have authority, right? Yes. Right? You know, we understand that they have the authority that's given to them that is backed up by the government by which they represent. Right? Here in Jackson County, we have the Jackson County Sheriff's Department, and our deputy sheriffs have the authority that has been given to them by the sheriff of Jackson County, who represents the government of Jackson County, right? So do we ever question the authority that a deputy sheriff has in Jackson County? No, we don't. As a matter of fact, when you're driving down the road and you look in your rear view mirror because you hear a siren and you see the blue lights flashing, you understand that you better pull over, right? That is if you're a law-abiding citizen. Okay? But you have to understand that they have the authority to pull you over if you are doing something wrong, or they have the authority to make you get out of their way if they're responding to an emergency, right? Yeah. Just like if you see a fire truck or you see an ambulance coming up behind you, you understand that you have to get out of their way because they have the authority to proceed through. They have the authority to go through a red light, which we know, you know us driving would not have the ability to do that. See, we who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ should understand that in His name, right? The Bible says, there is no other name given among men, by, uh, given among heaven and earth by which we must be saved, but by what? The name of Jesus Christ. So see, we have the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. And that our authority is even mightier than that of a police officer. Why? Because a police officer has the authority to affect you in the natural. To enforce the natural laws. But what you need to understand is you are given the authority in the spiritual as well. Amen. That deputy sheriff does not, unless he's he or she is a believer. Amen. Amen. Jesus anointed or he delegated his authority to 70 people to go out and cast out devils and heal the sick. Luke 10, 17 through 20 says, and then those 70, the 70 returned with joy, okay, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. See, get this, even the demons are subject to you, all right, to you in the name of Jesus Christ, and because you have the authority of a believer. Why do you have that authority? Because the Holy Spirit resides in you as a believer. Amen? Amen. Right. So he continues on saying, and he, Jesus said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold. Now here, look at this here. He says, I give who? Say me. Right. He says, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, and look at this, over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means 
hurt you. The devil cannot, he does not have the authority to come against you. When he comes against you and he wrecks havoc in your life, it's because you are allowing him to. Come on. Come on. All right? He don't have the authority over you. He don't have the authority to control your life. He don't have the authority to control your health. He don't have the authority to control your finances. He don't have the authority to control anything by any means because he does not have the authority. You have the authority. You have the authority. You've been commissioned by the Lord Jesus Christ. You have the authority. He says this, he says, Nevertheless, uh-oh, pay attention here, Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this. He says, Spirits are subject to you. Oh, oh boy, spirits are subject to me? Ah, he says, But rather rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Greater, greater than the thing that, that the, the subject, that the spirits are subject to you, is that you, your name is written in heaven. You see, when a police officer gets commissioned, their name is written down that they have the authority of that police officer. When in the Navy, every time you uh, you get a higher rank and get more authority, what do they do? They they write your name down. And then, you know, uh, my, I, I started off having my first bit of authority. I was, I was a third class petty officer. And I was, so my, my title was DC3 touch off. Right? Then when I made second class, I got a little bit more authority. And my title changed to DC2. And then I got a little bit more authority and became DC1. And as the higher I went, the more authority that I got. Amen? Amen. And so that's what Jesus says with you, that your names are recorded in heaven that you have the authority because your name is recorded as saying that you are in authority over the spiritual and the spiritual cannot take authority over you. Amen. 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 Yeah. Why do we have authority? Because Jesus has the authority over all demons and principalities of darkness. Yes. And as a believer in Jesus Christ, we have been anointed, we have been delegated, we have been commissioned in the power in Jesus' name to have the same authority. However, you must know your authority in order to exercise life. You have to know that you have the authority because if you don't know you have the authority, you'll never use your authority. A person who has the Spirit of God in him is authorized. Look at this. They're authorized to release God's power. You are authorized to release the power of God over your life, mm -hmm. over your family, over your finances, over your health, over your city, over your state, over your nation, over the world. You have the authority to release that power. Mark 16, 17, and 18 says, And these signs, what signs are these he's going to tell us? Will follow a believer? He says, In what? My name. My name. Whose name? Is it Joe Cutchall's name? No. All right. In the name of Jesus. Right. Jesus right. says, In my name, right. they will, not might, not could, not possibly, but they will cast out demons. Yes. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up the serpent, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means harm them. And look at this. They will lay hands on the sick, and they yes. will recover. Amen. Wow. Yes. You see the authority that you have? I, did not, I mean, who else can go and lay hands on the sick? Right? And they recover. And we go to a doctor because we're sick. And the doctor says what? Take these pills. See you in two weeks. Right? They don't come in and lay hands on you and cast out demons. They don't come in there and lay hands on you 
and 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 the the, the, the weak backs are made strong, the broken bones are made mended, right? That's not what they do because they don't have that authority. But Jesus says, in His name, you have that authority. Let me tell you something right now. Never question your worthiness. Never question who you are as a child, as a son, as a daughter of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Never question your worthiness of who you are. I want to ask them, do you see on TV right now, do you see uh, Prince William or Prince Harry questioning their worthiness as a prince, a son of the king? Do you, you see you see Kate Middleton or, or, or Meghan Markle questioning their worthiness as a princess because they married to the prince? They know who they are. They know what authority that they have. Right? And they don't question. You have authority and you Jesus has authorized you. He has commissioned you to do great and mighty works through his strength. But be careful with something. It's not on our own. It's only, only through the name of Jesus Christ. The second thing I want to look at is you can exercise the authority of God. Ooh, wow. Wait a minute. This is, this, see, this word, it blows people's minds right here. I have the authority, and I can exercise the authority of God, the creator of heaven and earth. Well, you know, that kind of looks back a couple weeks ago when Pastor Rachel was talking about our words that we speak. We create, our words are creative or destructive. Right? Our words breathe life or our words breathe death. Okay? Our words empower or our words depower. Right? We can exercise the authority of God. Wow. See, one thing we need to understand is that we too, just like I was talking about the prince and the princess, right? We too have authority because of our king. And when we become a child of God, when we are blood, when we have the blood applied to our lives, the blood of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, when it is applied and is anointed in our lives, and the Holy Spirit takes a presence inside of us, we become joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Right? That means we have the same authority as Jesus Christ by using His name, right? Yes. Yes. Jesus. That's what we need to understand. We can exercise the authority of God simply by speaking His name. Because we are joint heirs with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Almighty God. Yes. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We were made in His image to what? To rule and to reign yes. with Him. Amen. To rule and to reign with Him. Why do you yes. think that devil hates you so much? Yeah, that's right. Why do you think that the devil's going to come after you with everything that he's got in his arsenal after you? Right? Because you were created to rule and reign with God. Yes. And he don't want you to understand that. He don't want you to realize that. He wants to be able to subject you and to subjugate you. He wants to be able to put you under his authority, his power, right? But he can't. Unless we let him. That's right. He only has the authority in our lives that we give him. I, I want you to understand that. He only has the authority in our lives that we give to him. When we give away our authority to him, he has that authority now. We need to take it back in Jesus' name. Yes. Say, devil, you ain't got no authority over me. Yeah. Because I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Look at Romans 8, 16 to 17. It says, the Spirit Himself, who? The Spirit, I bears witness with our spirit that we are what? Children of God. Who's the children of God? I am. Amen. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and 
joint heirs with Jesus Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be what? Glorified, Glorified together Amen. with him. Amen. 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 Wow, can you start understanding the authority that's given to you? Yes. Who you are? Yes. You know, I want you to look at your ID card in a whole new way. Yes. All right? Because it doesn't just say who you are. Because now beside your name right after that, it says joint heir with Jesus Christ. Yes. Woo! Hallelujah. All right? Joint heir with yes. Jesus Christ. And because we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ, we have a greater authority than anything, anything in this world. Why? Because the name of Jesus, the Bible says the name of Jesus Christ is what? Is higher yes. than it's any anything. other name. Yes. There is no other name higher than the name of Jesus Christ. There is no authority higher than the name, uh, than the authority of Jesus Christ. And if you are a joint heir of Jesus Christ, then you have his what? His authority. John 4, uh, 1 John 4, 4 says, But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory. Why? I'm a winner. Yeah. I'm a winner. You are a winner. You won the victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in this world. The spirit that is inside of you right now is greater than any spirit that can ever roam the earth in the natural or the supernatural. Amen. Yeah, that's right. All right? And if He lives inside of you, that makes you what? Greater than any other spirit. Amen. 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 You are greater than any other spirit because the Holy Spirit lives. Man, does this... I want you to start getting this understanding. Alright? The devil ain't got nothing on you. The devil ain't got nothing on you. Alright? So what it is that you need to take authority in? What is it that you need to exercise your authority in? What areas of your life do you say that I have the power to exercise authority? Look at my next uh, sub, the subject here. I want to talk about this. We have the power of God's word to exercise our authority. See, a police officer has a commission card. And this commission card says that he has the authority to exercise the laws that of the area that he lives in or that he wow. serves in. Right? I actually, on my ID bag for AMR, it says that I have the authority to exercise medical uh, or to practice medicine in the area of which that I have been commissioned in. Right? So when I'm in, when I'm on, in my element on the ambulance as a paramedic, I have the authority from my medical to medical control physician to practice medicine and to give medicines according to what I see that they need to be given to. Right. So you have the authority to practice your uh, your you have the commission to practice authority in the areas of your life that God has authorized you to. Right. Wow. Now what errors did he tell you you're not authorized to practice authority? He said you have what? All authority? Amen. So Jesus not only delegates his authority to us, but let me tell you something. He also gives you opportunities to exercise your authority. I want to look here in uh, Mark uh, 4, 50, uh, 35 through 40. You can understand this here. He says, on the same day that evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. He says, let us cross over to the other side. So see, now he's given them the, the, the authority to go, right? He's given them, he's given them orders that what they need to do. Just like the police officers give them orders whenever they're out there patrolling, they know what they have to do. He said, now when they left the multitude, they took him along in the boat he was in, and the other little boats were also with him. It says, 
and a great windstorm arose. And the waves in the, and the beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are all perishing? And see it. So many times we got something going on in our life. Right? And we look up to the sky and we say, God, don't you even care that this is happening to me? My bank account is at a zero and I have no groceries in the house. My light bill is almost two months past due. God, don't you care? My family has forsaken me and won't have nothing to do with me. God, don't you care? My kids are sick all the time and I can't even get them to the doctor to get the medicine they need. God, don't you even care? How many times have we done that? See, the disciples were in the boat. The wind was blowing. The rain was coming down in torrential rain like we had the other day. All right? And the waves are crashing into the boat. And, and they woke him up and said, Jesus, don't you care we're all about to drown out here? They get like we were so many times. It says, then he arose. He rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Amen. And then he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have oh, no God. faith? Cameron, bring that picture up of the boat. It should be on the uh, Chrome. Is that coming up? It's on the computer. You, you may have you may have to reduce the um, the PowerPoint for right now. what the boat looked like. Right? The boat that they had it in the Sea of Galilee. Cameron, can you focus in the camera on that for me? All right, so that those are on, online can see this. Alright, here's the stern. I mean, here's the bow and here's the stern right here. See this little deck right here? Jesus was on top of that. Alright? See, there's no room underneath of that for people to get in. This is the area that they worked. Then they threw the nets, they would stand up on these here, and they would throw the nets into the sea to catch the fish. So I want you to understand this. Jesus was not down in some hold in the boat. He was not in the pilot house. Right? He was not in anything inside that would not keep him from the waves crashing over onto him, from the rain beating down on him. There was nowhere he was at that he was not getting soaking wet just like the rest of them. So why was Jesus asleep? It's not because he was so tired that he just could not wake up. It's not that he was just laying there and just, just out of apathy, just said, I'm just so depressed I can't even get up and move. All right? Jesus was laying there asleep for the sole purpose of allowing the disciples to exercise the authority that was given to them. All right? See, what was Jesus was waiting on was for one of them to stand up and look at the wind and to look at the waves and say, wind, stop it right now. Waves, be still. And if they would have done this in the name of Jesus Christ, then the authority would have went out from them. Yes. The power of God 
would have went out from them and calmed that storm. That's why he said, why do you have no faith? Can we go back to the slideshow now? Thank you. See, he says, that's what he said. Now, how is it that you have no faith? Why? Because they did not exercise the authority that was given to them. Amen. So see, so many times in our life, so many times when, when the wind is blowing and the rain is beating down on us and the waves are crashing into the boat and it just looks like we're, we're just all about to drown in it. We're, the boat's going to sink and we're going to be tossed into the ocean and we're going to drown out here. It's because we're not standing up in the authority of Jesus Christ and taking control over the situation like we should. You have the authority. Yes. All you have to do is exercise that authority. And he's going to give you the opportunity. He's going to give you the chance to exercise that authority just like he did here with, with the disciples. So see, whenever the storms are raging in your life, stand up. Be a man. Be a woman yes, yes. of God. Yes. A joint heir with Jesus Christ. And take authority over him. Yes. Take authority over yes. You have the authority. Matthew 17, 20 says, So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, that you have the faith as a mustard seed. The faith of a mustard seed. You will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and then what? Everything will be impossible for you, right? Nothing. Yes. Nothing. Nothing. What's impossible? Nothing. Nothing. That's right. Is something impossible? Nothing. Nothing will be impossible for you. And let me tell you something. If you can move a mountain, you can calm the storm. If you can tell the mountain to move, you can tell the waves to be still. If you can move a mountain from here to there, you can tell the wind to stop. So what storm is brewing in your life right now that you have not taken the authority over? What mountain has got to be moved out of your way? Amen. Say, I'm a mountain mover and a calm storm. But see, one thing we need to understand here is we must be given authority in order to exercise authority. We must be given authority. Next one, Cam. All right. Just like a person that dresses up like a police officer, puts blue lights on their car, and attempts to execute the law does not mean they have the authority to do so. As a matter of fact, if someone does this, they can be arrested and charged with impersonating a police officer. Why? Because they were never given the authority to, ex to execute the law. Did you know that we have people that are pretend Christians? Say it isn't so, Pastor. As a matter of fact, just like the police, uh, the people who impersonate a police officer tries to wreak havoc in somebody's life, these pretend Christians, these uh, these impersonating Christians, will try to wreak havoc in your life as well too. And we have to understand that they don't have the authority to do that. We were at a. a Pastor Rachel and I were at a church one time that, that, where we used to go to, and there was this lady came up to uh, Pastor Rachel while she was praying, and she says, God told me that, uh, what was it God told me? Um, How he, she was, he was going to give her all the authority I had. Yeah, he was going to give her all the authority that she had. She was, he was, basically, she was going to take Pastor Rachel's authority away from her. She turned around, she looked at her, she says, I rebuke you in Jesus' name, and the lady left. Amen. Not only did she leave Pastor Rachel, she left the church. Wow. All right? 
Why? Because she was she was an impersonator. She was not a real child of God. And we have impersonating Christians. We have people impersonating themselves as a child of God. And they don't have the authority to execute God's law either. Wait a minute. My notes, okay. My notes are playing tricks here on me. Give me this. All right. Okay, I'll back for a minute. Okay. Now, I want to look real quick at seven men that attempted to impersonate God's authority. So let's look at Acts uh, chapter 19, verses 11 through 16. It says, Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons which were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Uh -huh. Come on. It says, Then some inherent Jews, Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ over those who have evil spirits, saying, We exorcise you by the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. There were also seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, who did this, who did so. And the evil spirits answered to him, Look at this. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? He says, Jesus, I know, because the Spirit recognized Jesus' authority. Right? He said, Paul, I know, because he recognized the authority that was in Paul because of Jesus Christ. Right? But he looked at the seven, he says, but who are you? Because he did not recognize any authority in them. Because they had no authority. They were operating outside of the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Right? And just like the, the, the man or the woman who tries to impersonate a police officer and pull you over, right? they're, they're operating outside of that authority. And when they get caught, they have to pay the price. Right. Right? So this, these seven sons of Sceva were operating outside of the authority. And now look, they got caught. Okay? Because the Spirit said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? And look at this here. It says, and then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped upon them, overpowered them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Let me tell you something. I've gotten some whoopings before. But never one that left me running out of the house naked. Alright? That is a serious butt whooping that you get when you run out of the house naked and wounded. Okay? And that's what happened to them. The Spirit slipped upon them and whooped them really good. Why? Because they didn't have the authority to do that. Right. But question. Why was so different about Paul doing? Let's look at that next that, that verse up there before. Okay, we're going to go to the next slide. I got on the next slide. Verse 11 says. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out of them. Why is it so different that Paul was able to speak to the spirits right? and they had to leave? That even if a napkin, a handkerchief was touching his body and it was taken over and was placed upon somebody else's body. That the sickness had to leave. The demonic spirits had to flee. Because just that handkerchief, that piece of cloth that touched Paul's body, when it touched theirs, it brought such power. Why was it so different with Paul? Because Paul worked under the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. He was commissioned to have the authority to do this. He was commissioned to have the authority to cast out demons. 
He would have the authority in the name of Jesus Christ to heal the sick and make the lame walk again. He had all authority that was given to him by the name of Jesus Christ. We cannot operate outside of the authority that we that is given to us. If we don't have the authority, we cannot operate it. We have to operate in that authority. Amen? Amen. Just like the police officer, they have to be given the authority of the government that he or she serves in order to operate in that authority. So how are we given the authority? How is this, How do we get commissioned to operate in the authority of Jesus Christ? It's very simple. We have to accept Him as our Lord and our Savior. Yes. We have to allow His blood to flow over us. We have to allow His cleansing power to come in and to change us. Amen. Yes. Right? We have to have our mind renewed. Right? We have to have our spirit reborn. Jesus said that we have to be born of the flesh and of the spirit. What is he telling us to Nicodemus? Mm -hmm. right? And when we are born of the spirit, then the Holy Spirit comes in and resides inside of us. Amen. And it gives us yes. the authority yes. to operate in the power of God. Yes. Wow. Amen. We have the authority to use the name of Jesus Christ Amen. and to make the spirits subjugated to us. We have the authority that we can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. We have the authority that says that my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus in heaven. Yes. We have the authority that says, don't worry about what we're going to eat, what we're going to sleep, what we're going to wear. He said that, that the Gentiles, the, the, the heathen Gentiles, that's what they worry about. He says, but my God shall supply all that he needs to seek first the kingdom of God, and yes. my God shall what? Supply all of your needs. Yes. yes. Right? Yes. We have the authority to walk in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. when we allow him to dominate our life. Amen. Amen. Jesus has delegated power or authority over Satan to you as a believer. Therefore, you give him no place. You say, don't give Satan any place in your life. Why? Why do you not want to give Satan any place in your life? Because you are born in the Spirit yes. of God. Amen. You are filled with the Spirit of God, and you have been given the Word yes. of God. The Bible says that this is my sword. Yes. This is the sword that I take, and I hack the enemy to pieces with it when he comes after me. When he comes after my wife. When he comes after my children. When he comes after my grandchildren. I take the authority of the Word of God, and I hack him with it. And I say, no, you have no I yield my sword, yes. which is the word of God. Yes. I open it up, and I said, right here it says, Satan, look here, you can read it for yourself. Yes. I, me, I yes. have authority over you. Yes. Amen. This is the law that's been established, yes. and it cannot Hallelujah. be revoked Come at on. any time. Come Three elements that you need to know is enough to carry out your spiritual authority here on the earth. Number one, you don't need any more authority than you already have, any more power than you already have. You have the power. Energizer Bunny ain't got no power over you. Alright? You might keep going and going and going. But one day that battery's going to go out. Yes. We saw that last week when Pastor Rachel's battery started going out in her microphone and she was trying to have to sing louder, okay? Because the Energizer Bunny couldn't keep up. Come on. You don't need no more power. Your power.
power is never going to run out. Why? Because your power is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. The Creator had He says, I was and I shall ever more be. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. You have all the power necessary to take control over the mountains in your life and the storms in your life. Amen. You already have all the power that's necessary to do that. All you have to do is simply exercise Come on. your Come on. authority. Right Amen. Simply exercise yes. your authority. The next time Satan wants to come up against you, mm -hmm. all right, what do you do? Exercise your authority. We saw Jesus do this, right? Yeah. He was on the mountain for 40 days fasting, not eating or drinking or anything. Devil will come up to tempt him and he says what? He says, if you're really the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Why did Jesus say? Scripture says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Yes. Amen. Every time the devil came after him, he used the word of God. Yes. Yes. He used the authority that he has. The word of God. He used that sword. He wielded it like an expert swordsman. And he defeated the enemy. He defeated Satan. Yeah. Amen. When the, Satan comes after you, wield your sword. Amen. You have the authority to do so. Jesus has already done everything necessary to secure your authority and power over sin. I talked about this last week. Every time the devil wants to come up and try to tempt me into sin, and what do I start doing? I start praying in tongues. Why? Because it exercises my authority over him. Right. Amen. Amen. I exercise my authority and I wield my sword. And that's what we need to do. We need to exercise our authority over sin, sickness, demons, fear. Hear me now, fear, yeah. all right, and the devil. All you have to do is employ the faith action to receive that authority and join forces with Jesus on this earth. Therefore, just as the scripture says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Stand with me, please. Amen. If you are here today in this building, maybe you might be on Facebook Live right now, you might be watching this on YouTube, and you say, Pastor, I don't know if I have the authority. I don't know if I have the authority that, that to trample over the scorpions and the snakes. I don't know if I have the authority over sin and death in my life right now. I don't know if I have that authority. I want to ask you, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you don't have that authority. That's right. Amen. Amen. Right? But you can. Yes, yes. If you say, Pastor, I once walked in that authority, but I've, I've walked away from it. I, I've had circumstances take control of my life. I've, I've yielded my authority over to the devil. Guess what? You can take that authority in you. You can take up your badge. You can take up your commission card. You can take up your sword and wield it one more time. Right. He's giving you that authority to do that. So all you have to do is just pray with me. Just, just close your eyes right now. Say, say, Jesus, today I lay down my life and I pick up yours. I'm asking you right now. To cleanse me by your blood. To wash all my sins away. And make me a brand new person. Restore my mind. And give birth to my spirit. In Jesus name. I claim you. As Lord. And Savior. Now. I know. I am. A joint heir. With Jesus Christ. I have all authority of heaven and earth 
by the name of Jesus in my life right now. Devil, I give you notice. You no longer have the authority to put me down, to trample over me, to run over me, to create havoc in my life. Today, all authority has been given to me. And I exercise my authority over you right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want you to start praising God right now. Make this song here part of your prayer as you're praying to Jesus. Thank you. 